In this video, I'm going to show you how the new test project recorder handles complicated iframe-based applications like Salesforce, and also show you some really cool self-healing AI machine learning features that have been developed and added to the latest test project release. These new features really help to simplify the recording of test cases against applications that generate dynamic elements that change on every run, which can be really frustrating. And this can be seen in a lot of applications developed by these new low-code or no-code application platforms like Salesforce. And I know for a fact that Salesforce is even trickier to automate because not only are the elements dynamic, but they also heavily use nested iframes that are also dynamic. So it's hard to get any automation tool to reliably run tests against these applications. This is important because I don't know of many medium or large companies who don't have some applications that have been developed by Salesforce. So this is going to help a lot of testers that have been struggling to automate these types of applications. Whether you're a test automation beginner or an advanced user, there's a lot of things in this new release that are really going to help you accelerate your automation efforts. Also, what's awesome is that in 2019, I wrote a post on the top seven trends for 2019 and beyond, and Test Project has met most of those predictions, like maintenance of automation tests will get easier, heal thyself automation, AI test automation assistance, and the return of record and playback. These are not the same record and playback tools you may have used 20 years ago. They have advanced and you're really gonna see it in this video. And what's even better, Test Project is a free testing solution. And most of the functionality I'll be showing you can only be found in paid options from other vendors. So there's nothing to lose by checking out yourself. Let's take a look. All right, so as I mentioned in the beginning, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new project and actually test a very simple Salesforce application. Uh, even though it's a simple Salesforce application, it's gonna expose all the issues folks usually have with automating Salesforce or Salesforce type applications and how test projects new release is gonna help you with their AI machine learning self-healing feature. Really cool stuff, so let's jump right into it. I'm gonna create a new project. Create a new test. It's gonna be a web test. And as I mentioned, we're gonna test Salesforce. Their CRM application. First, make sure you select the start recording option, not the legacy recorder. So the new functionality obviously is in the start recording option. And if you try using the legacy recorder, it will not have the AI machine learning abilities that I'm demonstrating here for you. The other thing I wanna point out is currently this only works for web applications. However, I'm told that by the end of the year, they should also have this working for mobile as well. So this is gonna be a web application feature for now. So I'm just gonna approach this example as if I was a beginner newbie test automation engineer, and I'm gonna go through the application, just record it and play back with no modifications whatsoever, just so you could see the power of this new feature out of the box without you doing anything. So I'm just gonna log in. and I'm gonna create a brand new account. I'm just gonna enter in a few fields here. And rather than save it, I'm just gonna cancel this. And then I'm gonna log out. All right, notice it recorded everything, as you can see under each row here. 
As I'll show later, you'll be able to modify this as well. But for now, like I said, I don't want to do any sort of modification. Uh, I want to use this as if I was a brand new user. Also, this feature is helpful if you had like a help desk of folks that have no idea how to do automation. They can record issues that they're seeing in the field and just send the recording to you or a developer, and you can just play it back and watch it. Uh, this is a great use for this as well. So let's just play it back with no modifications and watch how the self-healing actually kicks in automatically for you. Because as I mentioned, this is a Salesforce application and all the fields that we record against are dynamic. So when we play it back, that dynamic value is going to change and it's going to have an issue. But because it's using self-healing, it's going to correct itself at runtime. So let's check it out. So on the bottom, you see an information bar, and the information bar will tell you that it expected a certain element, that it couldn't find it, and that it's working on finding a way to identify and interact with that element. As you can tell, it found a way, it self-healed itself, and it's going to continue to the next field. Also, what's cool is not only is it self-healing, but it also is adding something that Test Project calls adaptive weights. And this functionality is embedded inside the AI service that they develop. So at runtime, not only is it looking for alternative elements, but it's also using weights for the element to appear on the DOM automatically without you doing anything. So two of the most common causes of flaky tests and automation I've seen is poor selector choices and poor weight mechanisms that testers use. Uh, so it's not necessarily the tool that's the issue, because this is actually using Selenium behind the scenes, but it's actually people creating flaky tests because they don't know what they're doing. This takes care of two of the major reasons I've seen most automation tests fail, and that is poor selector choices and having a poor weight strategy in place as well. This takes care of it for you automatically. So as you notice, it is taking a little bit of time to run, but that's just because it couldn't find those IDs the first time. It's self-correcting. So when we rerun it, you'll notice that it, when it reruns, it's going to rerun much faster. So as you notice it ran, you can also see a pop-up and the pop-up confirmation tells you uh, what happened and how it self-corrected itself. And if for some reason you don't like what it did, you can unselect it or you can just keep it and click confirm. So when it plays back later, it'll use the values you just confirmed. Also in the recorder itself, you could see for each element, it has a color indicator to say whether or not it passed or failed. So if you want to learn more about what it did for each particular step, you can click on that step, click on details. It'll show you what the message was, what it did, and also what element it used to identify that particular field. Um, if it did fail, you'll see it in orange. Well, if it's self-corrected, you'll see it in orange. You'll see this little heart icon. And if you click on details, it'll show you that it was looking for an element with this ID, but it couldn't find it. So it had to self-correct itself. And here is the X path it used to heal itself. Cool stuff, right? And like I said, it did this all automatically. So if for some reason you're new to test automation and you don't know much about XPath or you don't even know what XPath is, you don't even have to inspect any elements yourself that'll take care of it for you behind the scenes. Uh, but if you are an experienced automation engineer, you can also go in and modify this as well if you wanted to, just by going in and clicking on the pencil next to element. And if for some reason you don't like the XPath it chose for you, or you want to add your own locator strategy, you can add your own locators as well. How this works is it'll work from the top to the bottom. So it'll look for the first element first, the first locator first. If it doesn't find the first locator, it'll go to the second. If it doesn't find the second, it'll find the third and so forth. Uh, if it does find the first one, it doesn't go to the next two. Uh, and because this is using machine learning over time, what it does is it will automatically bubble up the locators uh, the most reliable. So if you ran like a thousand times, it automatically will start weighing these to say this is the one that is probably the most likely to be the one to locate the element the quickest or the most reliably. What you can now do is run the test. It automatically will take now the recommended elements it found at runtime when it self-healed itself and it's going to run a lot quicker. So let's just run it and see that in action.
Very cool. So you notice how quickly it ran now because it took the self-healing that it identified the first run. Uh, it took you accepted it, and so when it ran the second time, it's now using those updated selectors to find those fields that it's testing. All right, so now let's run this within test project and just see what that looks like as well. So in test project, I'm going to run it as if I was running in CICD or an unintended user. So if it does find an issue, it will self-correct, but it's not going to show uh, that pop-up at the end. So let's just run it. I'm just going to use Chrome and the same login for Salesforce. And you can also look at the results within test project and look at the individual runs. They'll show you if it passed or failed. Also, if you look at the individual steps, you'll see a heart symbol in the report, just like we saw in the runner itself, which means the step was healed by test project. If you look at the error message in each of that step, it'll show you what the original locator was and what test project used to heal it. All right, so I just wanna go back to Salesforce and just spy on a few of the elements to let you know why this is so cool what just happened, because it's because it's pretty incredible, especially if you've done any sort of Salesforce type testing, how it was able to self-correct itself at runtime to handle these dynamic elements. All right, so if you look at our recorded test, and we took a look at this field here. The original value it recorded is 1897. So 1897 is the ID. And if you look at, for the same field, if you were to spy on this or inspect it, notice the ID now is 1900. So usually in automation, IDs are usually the most reliable, but in this case, with applications like Salesforce that dynamically create elements, they're not as reliable. And this is why a lot of automation tools out there have issues automating applications like this, because it's very difficult to find a locator strategy that's going to be reliable over time. And as you saw, Test Project automatically found a locator that's reliable automatically it's self-healed at runtime that when you run it, it's automatically going to be able to handle all these different dynamic values that keep changing for every single run. So you can see how helpful that, that's going to be for you if you're doing any sort of test automation. I just want to show you one other quick example of another issue a lot of automation engineers run into, and that has to do when you hover over elements and then something happens behind the scenes. A lot of times if you're using a record and playback, way of doing automation, or even if you're programming it, sometimes it's difficult to get that hover right and to then program all the steps in order to get to the action that you're trying to interact with. So let me show you how Test Project handles it automatically as well using AI and machine learning. So let's create a new test. Call it web. And we'll call it Test Project menu. All right, so once again, I'm not going to do any sort of modification with the recorder. I'm just going to interact with this web page. Uh, notice these menu items. I'm not clicking on any of these menu items. All I'm doing is hovering over it, and it's showing a drop down. So normally what would happen is if you were to record this, which you click on, say, add-ons, notice it only shows a navigation and then it clicks on an add-on link, but it never shows hovering over that platform, which makes that element available. So a lot of tests would fail at this point, but let's run this and see what happens. Notice I couldn't find the add-on 
element. So it's looking. And notice how it automatically was able to know that I had to hover over platform in order to click on that on add-on link. Just think about that. Just think about all the applications you test and you have to deal with uh, with these type of hover elements. And Test Project just took care of it automatically. So I'm not saying this is a silver bullet, but I'm saying this is probably going to save a lot of automation engineers a lot of time. Because in essence, it's taking care of a lot of the automation heavy lifting for you behind the scenes without you doing it yourself. And if you have a lot of beginner testers or automation engineers, or even if you have, as I mentioned earlier, say a help desk that needs to capture issues that are being recorded in the field, they can just record a test script automatically, send it to the developer, and a developer can run it. And the person who recorded the application doesn't have to have much knowledge on actually what happens in automation to get that to work. And if you are an experienced automation engineer, you also have the flexibility to do any sort of modifications you like yourself. So if you're someone who likes creating your own locators or adding more locator strategies yourself, you can do that. But you'll find out over time after using a tool like this that uh, the times you have to actually have to do that will be won't be as often as you would you would have to with another tool. All right, so that's it for some of the new features in the new test project recorder. I just want to reiterate that there is no tool that's going to be a magic solution for you. Automation testing is hard. It's software development. However, over the years, these tools have gotten better and better. And so a lot of the issues we saw previously with other record and playback solutions have been resolved. And they're only going to get better as the time goes on. So I definitely recommend you check it out, see how it can help you and your team. I think it's going to save a lot of people a lot of time, especially folks that always struggle with flaky tests. This type of self-healing, I think, is really going to help make your test more maintainable. It's going to keep the trust of your team members as it runs in CICD because you're going to get less and less flaky results. And then team members, when it does fail, people are going to stop really paying attention because it's most likely a real issue. So hope you like it. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And as always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.